Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Let's Roleplay Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, Dusk's Tale. We are here with Dusk in the Firehouse, and it is now 4am in the morning. We managed to have a little bit of a sleep, which I am happy about. I have sorted some of the equipment outside with the idea of us taking that with us. We'll cross our fingers and hope that we're going to be able to take as much of it as possible but I have no idea what the condition of everything is outside. We're going to start by having some deluxe oatmeal that we have just kicking about in our backpack. Yeah, I feel like that's enough. And we'll have some nice, clean water. Our hunger is sated. We're not, our thirst isn't quite there. We've drank quite a bit. I don't want to get bloated. Ah, hydrated and sated. Nice. Okay, so we have equipment that we want to try and drag out of here. I'm going to start trying to crawl in the, in, the, in the hopes that we are, rather crouch, in the hopes that we're quiet. We can definitely still hear footsteps outside. We have a small window where it's going to be dark out, and I'm wanting to take advantage of that to try and, uh, well, get out of here in one piece. I don't know whether or not I want to... Hmm... You know what, I think it is still going to be safer for us to use the bow. Because it's going to be relatively quiet. Uh, and we can still see at least a few squares away from us, so I'm happy with that. I do want to try and drag this equipment down here. And as you can see, it does take us quite a while to do that. So I don't I don't see a scenario in which we're going to be able to just haul all that stuff with us. Because we have a lot of equipment that we're uh, effectively dragging around. I'm going to stop hauling items. We need to see how bad things are out there. Let's open this thing here. Ignore further distractions. Okay, so we can see through here a big boy, a tough zombie. So we're going to see if we can get a shot off before it gets too close. We can. All right. Do we want to drag you inside with us? No, I think we're just going to go ahead and drop this to the ground. We'll stand up for a second and we'll just start whacking, sinking our things into the neck of this tough zombie. Not so tough now, huh? Um, I would be tempted to smash the corpse. However, I would also be nervous about doing uh, additional noise. We've already made noise here by hawakin, and I don't want to hawak anymore. Hmm. Let's grab our bow. Let's get wielding. All the other equipment, we're just going to have to just wait to see if we can clear a path at the very least. It looks like we can. Honestly, I think we can, I think we can drag things out of here. Um, you might also notice that the sound will be slightly different in today's episode. That's because we are using a new sound pack and oh, fantastic, it's a Howling Waif. That's exactly what I wanted to see in here. So it would seem that the Howling Waif was just kind of holding itself in the corner. It is a child. We're going to see if we can quickly dispatch it with a shot to the head with our bow. We can. We feel guilty, and I would hope that we uh, managed to actually take it out before it yelled. I didn't hear whether or not it did, so there's that. Uh, we're going to continue moving everything just down towards the side. We're not going to worry about you. It's more everything that's kind of in the doorway we want to have shifted out so that we can start moving things past it. Like that like that okay all right so the way is becoming clearer motorcycle armor okay you were a little bit prepared weren't you uh, i don't want to put items there i just kind of want to put them next to it okay actually you know what it's easier just to remove those so we'll move those shards and we'll just have to kind of go through on our side and yeah for now they're gonna live okay let's see Ah, oh, great. It is, uh... You've, if I, I think I've picked up some bodies here. No? There is definitely a corpse or two in there. Yes. <laughs> Move. Heard footsteps. There, there, there's a strong... Oh, really? All of them? How did I pick up all of them? <laughs> well, this is going to take a second or two. Let's just keep moving. I'm just doing this slowly so that if we see something, we can, uh, we, well, we can do something about it. Okay, so, in an ideal scenario, we'd have a rope or something like that that we could use. But, uh, we're just gonna try and get this stuff outside at the very least, because then we can just bring our vehicle here and get it picked up. 
I briefly mentioned that we are using a different uh, sound pack, and uh, yeah, we're using Atz sound pack, which is kind of a combination of a few different ones. We still are using Coax music, uh, because at this stage it's kind of, in my mind, it's just, it's, it's a part of Cataclysm, you know? Uh, we're going to start hauling. We're going to hear footsteps, that much is certain. I'm trying to keep an eye on our sound down the very, very bottom here and just see how this is kind of working for us. So far, ah, yes, we will stop moving items. Okay, so we've seen one zombie. We can hear other footsteps. Whether or not we are actually going to encounter something, we will find out, won't we? I want to try and get like a really good shot here. Okay, that is good. Let's try and get at least another kind of good. And another shot before it hits us. Nice. Let's go ahead and move up to here. We're going to grab those arrows. We've still got eight left in total. So you can see that we were shifting a few things here. Uh, most of the stuff that I'm taking, I want to take to clean and then take apart. Just so that we have supplies, or crafting supplies. Okay, I think we're probably going to have to try and take down a few of the dead that are around here. And I'm okay with that. We just don't want to become overwhelmed. And the good thing about nighttime is that we had a chance to do that. We're going to have to spin around and face this boomer that's rocking towards us to see if we can take it out before it reaches us. And we very nearly do. Oh, that is loud though. That is loud, which is rather unfortunate. Okay, so we do have a firefighter zombie that is on us now. We're going to go and drop that recurve bow. We're going to stand up and just get to biting and slashing. Thank you very much. Let's grab you again. Okay. We can hear an alarm to the northeast. So, if you remember in the last, we did encounter uh, an alarm in the gun store. I'm hoping that that is going to take the majority of the interest of creatures around here. What did you have on you? You had some Riesling. You just had some nice wine just kicking about in your backpack. You actually did have a backpack. Okay. Fantastic. Well, we are going to continue moving things for now. I'm not going to drag these the entire way. Our hands are not free, which makes hauling slower. Okay, in that case, let's just go ahead and wear our bow for now. Because I don't think that takes us too long to do. Let's get hauling with both of our hands. And sure enough, we have a listener that's on us right now. Kind of not surprised. The listener should be able to hear us. As it's what they do. Ah, Okay. We return the gift of violence, and in its stead, a feral hunter appears. The feral hunter, we're going to see if we can quickly take out, and we do not just yet. But we move to the side as it slashes at our left arm. A few vertical strikes, and another, and we've taken it out. But it is in the doorway in such a way that it's going to be frustrating for us to deal with, so we need to make sure that we clear it out of here so that we can start hauling things past it. We're going to go and grab that cash card as well. Okay. Okay. All right. We are kind of semi-successfully moving things. We've got one zombie down here, which we're just going to take out with some slashes, as you do. We'll just wait a second longer. We don't hear any others just yet. There is a bicycle down here, but I don't know if you're... There's two bicycles, actually. Ideally, what we'll try and do... Oh, I was going to say we'd go up this way, but this is the direction of where the gun store is. So, honestly, that might not be the best move for us. Surprisingly enough, just moving along the sidewalk here might be more what we're after. And then our vehicle is just on the, on the end of this long road that runs through town. So let's get back to hauling. We've spotted a zombie child. Okay, so they, they are hearing what's going on. I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to keep an eye on our sound. Yeah, so eight sounds when we're making those impacts. So it's definitely enough to catch the attention of some. And, of course, more children are making their way here. That's not going to make us very happy. As you might imagine. What you really don't want to be doing is... Uh, hauling items <laughs> as I'm doing. So I think that's why I'm, I'm going to stop 
and we're going to try and bring our vehicle here because uh, this is going to be it's going to be too painful of a process for us to do. So let's just continue moving. We could start sneaking, but honestly, we're pretty quiet. If you're looking at our sound, we're only making two noise each time we move. So something's going to have to be pretty close to be able to hear us. We're going to start wielding our bow again. Okay, hi. It's a snot gobbler. We're actually just going to run at this stage because I think, like the boomer, if we kill the snot gobbler, it is going to be making some noise. Um, it's around this time that I feel like I would like some infrared goggles, you know, to be able to see in the dark the, uh, the bodies so that we can actually try and move around them without creating light. That would be rather helpful. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not making a huge amount of noise here. I just want to go to crouching for a second and just see. Yeah, we make next to no noise. I think I think occasionally it seems to flash onto one, but this is a very, very quiet way for us to move. So I'm actually kind of ha pretty happy about that. Looks like we are still being followed. <laughs> Even though, as I was saying, we're being quite quiet. Take a precise shot against you. Two. I think we've got one more, maybe. We spotted another zombie? Really? Where? Yeah, I know. We, we spotted one and we just killed it. <laughs> uh, we're not going to smash this. Actually, we can probably get away smashing this one. Yeah. Make our way down towards our vehicle. Which uh, is still in pretty good nick. Other than the, uh, obviously, <laughs> damaged quarter panel at the, at the front here. Everything else is still looking pretty good, though. Okay, we're going to close up, and we need to drop some things into here. Um, there isn't too much for us to drop off. We will drop off the boots and the coat. Everything else I kind of really want to hold on to for now. And, uh, yeah, let's get driving. Um, we really should be driving with headlights on. We just, we just walked a decent distance. Honestly, I think we should be able to make that back without seeing where we're going. I know that does sound wild, but we actually have a pretty good memory of where things were. And so we're gonna see if we can navigate this in the dark because yeah, we should be good. We're not actually hearing any vehicle sounds at the moment, which is a little interesting. I'm thinking maybe I might have to do a full restart to get the uh, sound pack to switch over. And we've started encountering our first dead. I'm not surprised there. We're probably going to have to try and take down a few of them before we can move things into this vehicle, really. Because there were a lot of them here during the day. We just, uh, we want to make sure that we don't accidentally run over any of our equipment. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop the vehicle here. And I tell you what, I am actually going to restart uh, Cataclysm to see if I can figure out exactly what's going on with the sound pack. Whether or not we are using the right sound pack at the moment. I'll be back in just a moment. Ah! There we are. Things do sound different. As do our footsteps. Fantastic. Okay, so let's have a think about the situation that we're in. We need to try and get equipment from here, but we also, we're not really aware of how much trouble we could be in. There's been a fair bit of noise in the area. I want to see if we can make it up towards there. I'm going to try to move while crouched. So that we can be quiet. Okay, we've got a tough zombie. We'll see if we can get a shot off towards you. Before you make it up towards us. We do. Fantastic. We've got a boomer. Okay, that's the... <laughs> kind of one of the last things that we want at this stage. We're going to start running away. Trying to get a bit of distance between us and them. The boomer needs to go down first. But unfortunately the boomer is going to make quite a bit of noise. So let's hope the boomer is going to do that over here. The other reason why being quiet at this stage might not help us out all that much is um, they can smell us yeah so even if we are really quiet there's a strong chance that uh, it's still going to come for us um, so we're still making five noise when we shoot so I think at this stage I am just going to start trying to slash at that one there see if we can pick up and wield this bow can we wield you off the ground? Yes, we can. Okay, the boomer spews out towards us with bile as we take a shot, taking the creature out. Let's go grab our arrows back and start to make our way back towards here. We're going to stop running <laughs> because for one, that's going to drain our stamina. And let's just see if the way around our vehicle is clear for now. 
We're seeing one zombie. Okay. Can we get a precise shot off? Just. Okay, we've got three. A little bit more than I want to be fighting right this second while we're here. So let's go and just start kind of shepherding around them because there are a few. We'll just kind of hold our ground for now. Just allow our breath to return to us. Okay, we don't need a precise shot against you. We just need a decent shot. Back away one. Okay. We'll ignore the child for now. Okay, there we go. We will go for the child now. Precise. Okay. Looking at the next. Precise. Okay, we have a child upon us now. Back away. So the children aren't very robust, as one might suspect. We have a zombie snapper. We will stop picking up. The zombie snapper is potentially dangerous. Swimmer clad zombie lurks near water, but it has a protruding crocodile-like snout with rows of teeth, which, uh, yeah, we don't want that snapping us. So let's make sure that we're backing up at least two squares at a time and taking decent shots where we can get them. We don't have any bow. Arrows. <laughs> we don't have any bow. Yes, true, we don't have any bow. Let's start moving ourselves around here. We need that snapper to die. So we're going to need to grab ourselves an arrow from... Okay, three simple arrows. Okay, we can pick those up easily enough. Let's get ready to take a shot at you. And you can take quite a bit, it would seem. Okay, another kind of decent hit there. This is going to be the third. So let's actually just wait. We're going to try and get a really nice shot. Okay, it's decent. You are heavily injured, but you are most certainly still alive. There are two simple arrows over there. So let's start moving ourselves around. We can see that we have some other friends who are here now. Let's grab those arrows and we'll see if we can get a decent shot off towards you. No, it clangs up to the north. We try to break out the grab. So what, where it starts to get dangerous here is if we get grabbed by that uh, other zombie, there's a chance the snapper can just start laying into us, which we really don't want. Okay, another decent hit on the snapper. Severely injured, but it is still alive. This is definitely our biggest threat here at this stage, and we are starting to run out of uh, both stamina and uh, arrows. So let's actually start to try and get a, a fair bit more distance. You know what? I think we might try and do a little bit of a vehicle special here. Let's get this thing started. Oh, huh? Do you hear the vehicle start? Hey, hey, hey. So that's one of the main things I've heard about this pack. Oh, wow. Okay. Took a bit of damage there. All right. We are going to uh, stop and bite this zombie just in a second. We're going to pull the handbrake first. Uh, which, this this car stops on a freaking dime. We're going to drop that to the side and we are going to uh, make sure that we stop driving here. We're just going to let go of the controls, like so. We're going to close that damn vehicle door, um, which the sound is there for that as well. Brilliant. Let's uh, grab that bow of ours back up, because I th I'm pretty sure it's dropped. It might have dropped onto the ground. No, we're okay. And we'll start driving. Okay, let's spin this thing around. Okay. All right, so this point I think we are going to use a headlamp actually doesn't have much in the way of battery left yet yeah, it's not gonna light up the area much at all but we need to be driving with enough force that we're gonna run anything over that is around this region and you know what that's actually gonna be a little difficult it's the snapper that I'm concerned with the others I'm not that worried about honestly let's pull our handbrake here we'll stop driving um, so we don't have the arrows at this stage. We need to make sure that we stop running. So we're just going to see if we can walk. And we might try and walk over towards this building here. That might give us a chance to uh, hold our ground. The very least for now, we will just hold and see what happens. We'll take down two who got stuck up against a bicycle. Making a bit of noise. 
What's our encumbrance looking like? We're okay. Let's just take some deep breaths. Safe mode's on. We can hear that there. Yeah, there are definitely some friends around here. How much is that going to slow them down? Heaps. So getting them stuck on the bicycle is actually quite good for us. Who would have thought? Okay. So, Snapper, we know that you're out here somewhere still. We need to be ready to deal with that threat. And we are going to have to deal with that before we do anything else here. So let's just uh, continue moving. We'll see if there are any other arrows we can pick up in the area. And I don't think there are across any of these ones. Uh, we're not seeing any items. Or do we have a filter on? There is a filter for arrows. Okay. <laughs> All right. We've got a zombie. And there's the snapper. Okay. All right. We're being grabbed at this stage, so we can't move from where we are. Our arm is actually a little damaged, and the snapper is here. Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure we actually did the damage to... Yeah, that other zombie there. As it bounces off the snapper, falling to the side, the snapper moves towards us. It is severely injured, but we are grabbed at this stage. As we deliver a straight punch to the zombie snapper, but we do no damage, it stands strong. But then... <laughs> then we pull its head back to the side and we just bite down on its throat. And with one final blow, we tear that snout clean off. Dusk ain't having none of that. Let's grab those arrows. <laughs> Let's just have a look at the group around here. We want to make sure that there aren't any arrows that we're missing out on. Nope. There is a multi-tool that's close. Multi-tools are obviously quite helpful. Uh, what are you going to do for us though, multi-tool? A whole heap of different things. So we have, we've had a pocket knife, I think, before that can do this. And yeah, there we go. We have a pocket knife up here. But yeah, the multi-tool, not half bad. We do have a toolbox with us though, which is going to do a lot of what they can do but just better um we're unlikely to come back here so we're not going to concern ourselves with um working on smashing all those corpses we are going to just try and bring our vehicle back up towards here though so let's back on up attempting to not run anything over okay stop driving like the extra car noises Okay, all right, so we have a lot of equipment to get uh, out of here. We still have our bow in our inventory, fantastic. Here, here. All right. Oh boy. Okay, let's see. We are going to start shifting you all across. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a fair amount. So let's get moving. Um, we could just move everything, but I think at some stage we are going to hit that volume limit. No, we're not. Okay, we can get everything in there. Brilliant. <sighs> Let's just take a deep breath for a second here. So, I think there were some medium batteries. I don't know if we have enough to reload our headlamp. I will go to the back of the vehicle just to uh, see if we do. We've got medium batteries. We can take them apart to get smaller batteries. I really would like some before we try and move on. Are you a street sweeper? I think you might be. Yeah, that's where all the fun was happening before, down by this vehicle. Hmm. You know what? Let's just have a quick look around these bodies here. There's a chance that there might be something on there that we can uh, get some power from. The phones aren't going to give us anything. There's a cash card. We don't know how much is on that. And we have quite a lot up here as well. We're up to six arrows. Not bad. Let's see. The thing that's easy to miss is flashlights and all the rest. Yeah. Okay. Well, we might be driving kind of semi-blind for a little bit here. But at the very least, we kind of know where we're going. I do want to... Uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be destroying several things because we're running a lot over. And oh, wow. The front of our vehicle is torn apart as we do encounter some of the dead on our way out of town we'll just fly past this for now um there's a nice boarded up house here and i don't know if that's an abandoned house no that would lead me to think there might be survivors in there 
at some stage or another. So we're actually going to stop the vehicle here. The uh, electric vehicle just has incredible controls where you can pretty much stop on a freaking dime, it seems like. Do I want to try and crack into this thing right now? We could. We're actually going to do it from the side because uh, these can be um, trapped in such a way that, uh, oh boy, we're hearing something inside. And yep, there are dead inside. So we're going to start allowing them to filter out. That's at least a, a little bit uh, more comforting to me. Oh, that's not so comforting. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Oh yeah, we've got quite a few in here it seems. We're going to let them start to filter towards us as we get to work. Pummeling the tough zombie. Moving across towards the other. I'm going to take care of that child and just drag it out the way. Okay, so it would seem that this family locked themselves in here when this all started and uh, yeah, now this is the aftermath. Uh, we're going to actually drink that can of energy cola. Yeah, we're going to knock that back. We're going to continue moving through this house. So let's see what we have inside here. Let's have a quick gander. We've got, uh, okay. Nothing too wild for us in the bathroom. No doubt there's going to be some batteries in the kitchen here, so we'll see what we're able to find. There's obviously bleach and ammonia, there's some detergent, so we could wash some of the stuff that we've got so far. Duct tape we definitely want to grab. Um, light batteries. Yeah, so we might just stand here and see if we can reload to get something at the very least. Uh, no, we want, to, we want to get items and we want to get... Ah, uh, the batteries are out. Okay, that sucks. Um, I guess that's the good thing until you like actually look at something, like investigate it, you're not going to see how much is actually there of that item. You can tell that they're batteries, but until you actually look at them, you're not going to figure out how much there's uh, kind of going on in there. That's fine. Um, are we going to grab any of the food? Some of it is actually still preserved. Grab that sauerkraut. And it does sound like we have some activity in here still. Okay. Struggling with this door. All right, so we have a basement and we have a safe as well. And a door, a door behind the safe. Interesting. What's going on in this home? Okay, managed to pry that door open. Prying is obviously going to be more uh, noisy. Yeah, so the back of this, the whole back of this property is locked off. That's, uh, what's kind of going on there, huh? We've got some football armor in here. Oh! Oh, wow. Did they just... Was that a... Was that a hidden wall? I think it was. We got ourselves a survivor zombie in the back here. What the hell was going on at the back of this place? There are heaps of beds. Is this some kind of like... I don't know what, but we have two survivor zombies who, who are here now. Thankfully, we've kind of got them a little stuck uh, on this floor lamp for now. We do have two of them that are on us, which I don't like. We're going to try and move up onto this square, on top of the dead, and uh, we did take some damage there. That dog needs to die. So do you, survivor zombie. Come on. Our elbow pads are ripped as we attempt to tear at the survivor zombie. It is severely injured, and finally it is dead. We've still got more that are in here though. Let's try and keep them stuck here if we can. Now, that was a brick wall. It knocked itself through the brick. Ah, uh, and that's an acidic zombie. So we don't want to be fighting you up close, good sir. Which we're not going to do. So let's start to try and move away. Um, try to move away, rather. Okay, we need to start to wield our bow. Oh, wow. That took way too many turns. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's my bad. That was stupidly dangerous. And, uh, we need at least nine strength to be able to use the recurve bow, which we don't have right now. So that's, uh, that's great. That is great. So, attacking this, uh, acidic zombie up close is going to hurt us quite a bit. Now, is there any way we can get our strength back up? Yes, we need to we need to deal with the pain that we have currently. Unfortunately, we can't. We don't we really only have aspirin, which we can go ahead and take, but yeah, we're getting bathed on now. Um 
we're gonna have to we're gonna have to drop the bow and just try to fight. I imagine sinking our fangs in isn't the nicest thing in the world that we could do right now, but yeah. That's uh that's frustrating. Let's uh let's stop running just for a second. Just catch our breath. We're in severe pain from that acid. Thanks, friend. Ah, oh, dear. So I'm thinking it was the survivor zombie that was strong enough to push its way through there. Had to have been. We've got another zombie here. We're hearing more noise on the other side. Uh, we do need to see to these wounds, though. But at the same time, I want to see what's going on in here. We need to get off this bed. Okay. Um, let's have another aspirin as well. Okay. What the hell was going on back here? Right, well we found a flashlight. Was this like... We've got ammunition, we've got all these supplies up here. And it was kind of hidden behind this door, which was hidden behind, uh... Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this home. It's interesting, though. Alright, let's start getting some of these supplies. First of all, we're gonna need some batteries. So, we're gonna take the batteries from the flashlight that's just over here. Um, which actually appears to be empty. No, it does. Oh, no. There's ultralight batteries there. Okay. We'll take those for now. A professional plunger, very tempting to take, but for now we'll just take the detergent and the medical tape. We're actually overweight at the moment, and it's because our strength is, you know, kind of lowed. Um, some more detergent. We're going to need quite a bit of detergent. Soap, and that glow stick could be invaluable if we're in labs again in the future. Okay, let's see. We've got a nail gun. Hmm. You know what, I think we're going to take that because we can practice our handguns by firing nails. Yeah, and we'll take that. The signal flares, tempting to be able to use for turret distractions in the future. We're going to take the LR rounds. Um, charcoal smoker, we're going to go ahead and leave. It's actually kind of getting on towards the morning now. We're going to take this. Bowie is buddy. We're going to have a quick flick through that to see if it's going to be of any biz, you know. Ah, it's not going to let us actually... Let's try and just wield it. Can we read it now? Okay. Do you have anything for us, Bowie's buddy? Uh, no, you don't. We already know all of those recipes. But thank you, all the same. So there's still a basement to explore here, but we need to see to our wounds first, because we, we took a bit of a, a whacking, really. We've got a satire novel over here, a drama novel, and yeah, I don't I don't know who these people were. Psychic emanations. Maybe they were, like, kind of preppers. Yeah. A seemingly far-fetched theory about ongoing riots sweeping the nation has been gaining traction after a leaked document about experiments in magnetic control of brainwaves. Two weeks ago, I'd have told you this is ridiculous, said Dr. Andrew Morton, an epidemiologist and our leading correspondent for the medical base basis for the riots. Now, I'll consider anything, with the caveat that I don't think any of this is possible. Magnetic weaponry altering our brainwaves and making people cr into crazy violent psychopaths is more plausible than a lot of the theories that are running around. I certainly prefer this one to that zombies suggestion from a few days ago. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. The headlamp is off for now. And we are going to, uh, yeah. You know what? I think we've got a first aid kit in the car. We need some more um, disinfectant. And no doubt there's been a bit of activity outside. No, no. I mean, I guess we kept things quiet enough. All right, let's see. What do we have? First aid kit. We need you. Thank you. And we are going to disassemble you as one would do. Okay, so the booklet we don't need, but we're going to take everything else. Um, we can actually start offloading some of the uh, gear that we have here as well. So let's just go inventory, and we're going to start shifting off the ammunition and other bits and pieces we don't need. Um, yeah, Halligan Bar, we don't need to be holding on to you. That was silly of me to be 
holding on to that. Actually, probably the easiest thing we can do is to sort by weight and just have a look and see like that, for example. We don't need to be holding on to that. The sauerkraut as well. I think the rest is pretty okay. We're still overweight just because of our strength not being all that great. Uh, the detergent can go and the antiseptic needs to stay with us, though. Yeah. Medical tape, we can usually use you like bandages, effectively. Okay. Yeah, we're still overweight, unfortunately, so we're still kind of going to be slowed down. I'm enjoying uh, the variation and the difference of this pack so far. It is definitely an amalgamation of a number of different packs. Uh, the intense pain is still there. I need to start uh, holding on to more intense painkillers, I think, in the future. So, let's see. We do have antiseptic. We're going to put that on everything. So, just like we've done in the past, we're going to make it Q to make it nice and easy for us to go through and just disinfect everything. Uh, that does mean that our uh, quiver is not bound anymore. But that's okay for now. Okay, next up we've got bandages. Uh, we should be able to use all of these bandages here. Oh, that was antiseptic again. I made it a B, because I guess that's kind of kind of what we'd want to do, but it's a little too far away. Alright, bandage, bandage. Just make sure that everything is bandaged up. <laughs> We're on, we're on our painkillers now. We are still in intense pain, which I'm not super stoked about. I'm going to go and put that quiver back on cue for us. And we're actually going to use that to store our ammunition. Uh, we started wielding something there. <laughs> uh, we're going to store the antiseptic away. And we'll make you B again. Not N, but rather B. Okay. Alright, so, we have ourselves a electronic gun safe. Attempt to hack the safe. Yeah, sure. You cannot hack this. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, our intelligence is, yeah, it's not great at the moment. Our computer skill is pretty good. We'll try again. We cannot hack this. Okay. Alright, noted. We'll come back to that. We might actually try and rest here before making our way back home. Let's see what's going on downstairs first. We are just going to peek to begin with. Um, halfway down, the way down becomes blocked off. So we can't make our way down. Yeah, so I honestly, I, I think it's not worth us risking that. Um, either that or they were starting to make a basement and they didn't quite get there. I'm thinking is the case. Yeah. So let's uh, put our light back on. Just try again. Okay, we cannot hack this. All right. It might be that we actually just straight up cannot hack this. Uh, we, I'd want to rest here, but I don't think we're going to be able to. Uh, so what I want to try and do is just reload our headlamp. Uh, we'll just drop the other batteries. And so we've got 18 charges in there. That's a little bit better for us to drive home with. Oh, well, we don't need to worry about that anymore because... Uh, well, it's now bright enough outside for us to see, <laughs> and for things to see us. So let's make sure that we get to the vehicle as quickly as possible. Close it up behind us, and we'll get ready to go. We're going to make sure that we actually... St oh, you can crouch within the car. Okay, nice. Very nice. Um, but yeah, we're going to get this thing speeding on up. We hear the handbrake release there. And we are going to drive on back home. Okay, hearing some bats fluttering there in the early morning. In the early morning light. And, uh, well, we have made this drive before, and I'm hoping that we're going to make it without damaging the vehicle any further. We have a whole heap of equipment to bring in, a whole heap of Nomex to process. Uh, but that's going to be a really good resource for us to use when it comes to crafting armor in the future. So, yeah, let's get moving. Let's get home. High-speed Mego impact along the way. And there is actually a Mego guard that's out here still, so I would very much like to take you down if that's possible. And we manage. Wow. Go car go. And we have arrived back home. Pretty much in one piece. We haven't uh, bashed into anything along the way, which is great news. We'll try not to bash into anything now. So far, so good. And we'll just go ahead and start backing up there. 
straighten up. Okay. We want to pretty much back up until we're right up against there, so that we can use the, uh, the welding. Yeah, let's stop driving. Candy, hey there, you seem to be doing fine. We are back home. Oh boy, it's good to be back here. And I'm loving the sounds here as well. Very, very nice. Okay, so we still have our electric jackhammer, which is just stowed in the back here, but we need to shift a whole heap of crap out of here. So, we're going to go ahead and start moving that onto the floor. All of the stuff needs to be processed, it needs to be washed. So we're going to need a washboard to be able to do that in the first place. I believe uh, we don't actually have a washboard. Um, and you know what? I wonder if it's one of those things where we, we don't know how to make it again. Uh, <laughs> I really hope that that isn't the case. Let's just have a look. Washboard. We can make one. It's easy enough for us to make. Thankfully, boom, they're done. We've got a washboard in front of us. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to process here. A whole heap. So I'm going to start by taking all of the dirty equipment and uh, just starting to move that across. Yeah. Yeah. We want to make sure that we clean it before we try to um, break it apart into pieces. I'm thinking that we're going to be able to break the firefighter helmets into pieces. I guess we'll find that out. Yeah, and we do want to make sure that we have at least, you know, uh, you know, at least one thing of that because I am going to want to have some of this equipment. Um, many of you have said it's not actually going to help with the temperature and I, I suppose that that is true. Uh, while unfortunate, it is true. Um, anything else here that we want to be taking over with us? I don't think so. We are going to need our big thing of water, which we're going to just start uh, sloshing about and dragging on over. And I think as long as it's within the vicinity, we'll be able to use it. So we'll plonk it down on top of the table here. Yeah, we have a lot to work on. Um, we are going to need all the detergent that's there as well, so we'll grab that. Um, again, we're still, we're still over-encumbered. I want to try and get rid of the intense pain if we can. So, yeah. Let's start just dropping things off. I'm actually going to drop a few things at our feet. That's quite a big save update because we did go through quite a few cells. Uh, so let's drop that for now. And I think that's going to allow us to be okay. Just placing our gun on the side here. Let's have a look at the washboard that we just made. We're going to have to go ahead and pick that up. And we're just going to change that to BW. So I'm going to go A. Actually, painkillers first. Painkillers first, Rikon. We can go for some codeine. We could go for something a little bit more intense. Honestly, I don't have a huge amount of drug knowledge, so I don't know what is going to be best for us in this scenario. So, yeah, I mean, the codeine is going to be better. Yeah, I think we could just go for that. I mean, morphine <laughs> would do something. Uh... I think oxycodone is a painkiller as well. Uh, I would want to see that exactly first. So let's just let's just go through here so we can see that codeine, yeah, suppression of pain, cough, and other ailments. So we do want something a little bit more severe than that. Obviously, morphine is, uh, yeah, it's intense pain, and 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 we are actually our pain at the moment is actually intense pain. So there's that. Um, <laughs> Let's see, oxycodone. Okay, intense pain. Okay, it is highly addictive. Uh, very addictive. So what's very addictive and highly addictive? I don't think we have an addictive personality as well. Honestly, morphine's intense, but I think we might do it now. That is an open crate, never mind. Okay, so yeah, we are going to use the morphine in this scenario. Because uh, we are in intense pain. Um... We don't have a syringe around here anywhere. I'm pretty sure that we do. Maybe we have to have one in our inventory before we're allowed to play ball. Yes, I think that might be the case. So we'll go ahead and actually make that inventory so that we can do that. And I think it's just going to be activate. Yeah. Activate morphine. Yep. Okay. So that intense pain should start uh, dissipating a little bit here. Distressing pain. Yeah, it's, it's it's doing stuff. 
it is certainly doing stuff and um, we're we well, think we're in a pretty good mood overall <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and we have nothing to clean oh we actually do need to be holding on to it so that's uh that's that's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to hold on to um so I'll start going through. We can actually fit quite a bit of that into our backpack before we start getting, yeah, too stressed out. I do want to have a look at the helmet really quick to see if we're going to be able to either disassemble it or cut it into pieces. So let's just have a look. Um, it should be under, it could be under armor. Yes. Firefighter helmet. Uh, we can't disassemble you. Um, can I cut you into pieces? Okay, we can. Good to know. So we will look at doing that. We just won't do it just yet. We've got to work on these other ones first. So we're going to start moving these across. We can see the amount of water and the amount of cleanser that we need. Thankfully, it looks like we actually have quite a bit of cleanser. We have quite a bit of water as well at that. So we'll just uh, get you to work. We're going to use the soap bar first. And we washed all the items. It didn't actually take all that time, all that much uh, time at all. I kind of imagine that we are using the... Um, the water tub here almost as a makeshift kind of washing tub to try and process all this equipment uh the equipment that is processed we're going to go ahead and just move it over towards the other end here just so that we actually know what we've been working on but that was a whole heap of stuff so i'm quite happy about that obviously the helmets are going to be a little bit heavier for us to work on yeah we'll try and do all the helmets in one go if we can all right let's get to work We'll use the soap bar. Fantastic. Overburdened, but that's okay. Let's drop them off. Um, apparently, we still do have one firefighter helmet in there that we didn't work on, which is kind of a little strange. Um, let's go grab the rest. PBA masks. We can fit a few of them in there, but same kind of deal. They're kind of heavy. Okay, working on all of you. Soap bar, thank you. And let's go place them back. We don't seem to be washing these uh, cartridges, which is a little concerning. Don't think that we'll be able to. So that means that we should probably wash the masks in the hopes that we're going to be able to get good filters from them. Let's grab the other PBAs, all of these gauntlets. Okay. And you know what? You've seen me doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep on doing it. I will see you all on the other side. Just checking in, we are making good progress. I am having to haul the tank up here a few times to get water, but we're making our way through. And with that, that is the last of our equipment washed. It's a whole heap of turnout trousers and everything else. So at this stage, we want to make sure that we have at least one a whole set of firefighters gear uh, ready to go. So let's start off by grabbing some turnout trousers some turnout boots they're all a poor fit unfortunately we'll take a turnout coat we will take a helmet we will take one of the pba masks um, they're all poor fits we've got one flame resistant suit the fire gauntlets flame resistant hood flame resistant socks and flame resistant gloves uh there were gauntlets as well but i feel like we've missed the gaunt oh here they are, pair of fire gauntlets, and we've already put them down. Okay, so that is, that's effectively everything at this stage. So everything that's kind of down here, we can just straight up butcher, and that's what we're going to have to do. So it's going to be cutting up everything. We can see that it doesn't actually take us that much time to cut it all up. We could try, well, we can't try to repair it. That's the thing. We're doing this to get equipment, uh, rather to get materials from it. So we're going to cut up everything, hoping that we're going to get a whole heap of Kevlar and Nomex patches, and that we do. We get 112 of Nomex patches we get 89 Kevlar plates all up a really decent amount of equipment uh, enough that we could repair pretty much all this equipment here uh, first thing that we want to try and do though is uh, let's go to our sewing kit here I'm liking the the there's a few different tracks here that I haven't heard before I'm not sure if this is all coag music quite possibly not um, oh I made a huge mistake I was meant to take all of the gas mask filters out before I did that. That is, that was a big mistake on my behalf. Damn it. Well, you win some, you lose some. We still got a lot of equipment at the end of the day, so I guess that's something. We're going to go to our sewing kit here, and we're going to, uh, yeah, 
have that nice and accessible. We are hearing bats, which is interesting. Uh, but yes, the hub suit here, we're going to go ahead and see if we can reinforce it as well. So this should take it in and it should make it better. And sure enough, bam, just like that, the hub environmental suit is all nice and fitting for us. Uh, I do want to repair all this other equipment so that we can see exactly how it stacks up and also so that we might be able to use it to create some different types of armor eventually. So we're going to have to go and, uh, yeah, pick up as much of this as we can. I think we can, we can, yeah, we can actually get all of it in there. Nice. And for us to be able to do those repairs, it's going to take a fair amount. Um, we are not going to do it we're not going to reinforce it, but we want it to be fully repaired at the very least. Sewing kit ran out of charges. That should be, we should be able to do something about that. Reload. We do not have any thread to reload your sewing kit. That is unfortunate. I believe we do have a number of ropes and other bits and pieces here. So let's just do a quick search to see if we do, because ropes are probably the easiest way. No, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we had a long rope that we brought along with us. Do we not? Uh, if we do, it's probably up here. Uh, no, I don't see it. Uh, we've got a turn up coat and turn up boots that are good to go already. So we could look at just dropping our others down here. Let's see. Turn up coat and the turn up boots, they can both go down there and we can just cut those ones up, get some more patches. But yeah, uh, that's frustrating. And it's not going to be too difficult for us to figure out what to do there. We can we can get things easy enough or access to ropes. Uh, so we can see that there's a safety belt on these back seats here. Right now, that isn't a major concern of mine. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to butcher that short rope. We're going to get six long strings from that. And then the long strings, we're going to go ahead and disassemble those into short strings. And the short strings, we we'll go ahead and disassemble into thread. And then we have ourselves 50 thread. We do still need to get a few more of those short strings down because I want to have at least 200 thread just so that we're actually good to go. It's much faster than trying to just disassemble a rag. But just like that, we've got a whole heap of uh, thread. Enough that we might actually be able to do some repairs here. So first, let's go to that sewing kit of ours and we're going to recharge it rather reload like so and we'll go ahead and get to work on that hood until repaired thank you fantastic the flame resistant suit same deal there okay you okay it is fully repaired back to item selection flame resistant okay let's work on you nice the socks probably gonna need a soldering iron for the others okay nice they're all fully repaired now uh, let's see I know I can do the helmet as well okay that uses quite a bit of thread oh no one charge per use okay I see I see all right that's all right no that's a okay gauntlets next until fully repaired we'll go ahead and use a leather patch because um, Leather's a little bit easier for us to come by than Nomex. Actually, weirdly enough, we do have more Nomex right now. But uh, leather is definitely more easy to access. So the gauntlets are good. And finally, the turnout trousers. And then we've got a fully repaired and fitting set of firefighters gear. Well, we'll use, uh, we'll use some of the Nomex patches. Because Kevlar is just as difficult to find. But yeah, we've got a whole, a whole set now. Um... And it should all be fitting. And it should be all looking good. Uh, the boots were the only other thing that we had to have a look at, right? So let's see if we can quickly make those fit. Turn out boots. Okay. Let's see. Because, yeah, we do want to just kind of try and bring them in. Until fully repaired, but do not reinforce. Uh, until success or failure. Okay, so the boots now fit us. The PBA mask. Let's see if we can make that fit. Okay, that is now fitting as well. Nice. Very, very nice. And we still have a really large amount of Nomex and Kevlar plates left over, which uh, I'm very, very happy with. Uh, let's see. We probably do need a, a little bit more charge for our, um, our sewing kit to be able to make things in the future. 
so let's just go to those um, short strings and we'll go ahead and just butcher, uh, disassemble everything once. And then we're going to take that thread. Nice. We'll just go ahead and reload this again. Good. Nice and stocked up. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with uh, all the equipment that we've got so far. The flame-resistant suit, that still doesn't fit us? Ah, okay. Well, I guess there was one thing that we missed out on there. Let's see if we can jump back into this and go until we get a success here. Brilliance. Okay, so I'm not sure what we're wearing on our inner layers, but the flame-resistant suit and other things will be pretty good for us to have. This is up against the skin. It does give us some bash and cut protection. It does give us fire protection and environmental and acid, which is really quite good. It does cover our torso, our arms, and our legs. So we are going to wear the flame-resistant suit underneath everything else. So we'll go ahead and put that on. Uh, we are going to have to go through and remove a few things, though. So the bikini top we're not going to need anymore. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Uh, the compression shorts that we have on, we're going to have to remove those. So we'll go ahead and get rid of you. Okay, um, let's see. Was there anything else there that we could kind of... Obviously, a lot of the stuff here is doubled up, but I'm still looking at it, and I'm not, I'm not that... Yeah, I'm not that unhappy with that. It's pretty good, and our torso is actually looking okay at the moment, but we've just, we're carrying a lot of stuff on us. Uh, we do need to repair some of our equipment here, but um, yeah, we're just going to go through bit by bit. The flame-resistant hood, that's another good thing that we would be able to wear, and I think get away with wearing that without too much trouble. It does have a bit of encumbrance to it, but that's okay. Head encumbrance really doesn't affect us that much. So we'll go ahead and put that on underneath everything else, and we'll just see if it's, uh, no, it can kind of fit underneath all that equipment that we have there. Next up, we've got the gauntlets. We're probably not going to be wearing those. The turnout trousers are an interesting one for us. And uh, the gloves we're not going to wear because we need to have our, our hands out. The socks, I think we will go for. We're just going to do some basic comparing. I think we're just wearing regular socks right now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Reinforce socks at that. But we're going to go ahead and take those off. So a pair of socks, yeah. They're not going to be anywhere near as good as our fling resistant socks. So we'll go ahead and chuck those on and make sure that, yeah, we're actually wearing them underneath of our combat boots. Next thing we're going to have a look at is what we're actually wearing on our legs at the moment, the army pants. They're reinforced at the moment, so that means they'll be a little bit better. But we're going to see how they stack up against the turnout trousers. Um, yes, turnout trousers. Okay, so the turnout trousers are pretty much better in every regard, other than the fact that they do encumber us a fair amount. They've got good bash and cut protection, good environmental fire and acid protection. They're really pretty damn decent. I'm wondering how the survivor cargo pants might stack up against the turnout trousers. What I'm also thinking now is can we make anything that's kind of slightly armored out of our firefighter gear? We can make a heavy survivor mask, which while it does encumber us a decent amount, it gives us really good bash and cut protection. Hmm. An axe ring holster for us to be able to have an axe on our back, I'm assuming. No, to attach an axe to our waist. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah, we, we can make a whole heap of really interesting things. I'm just, I'm not sure what we're going to be able to do with some of that firefighter gear. I'm just going to search for fire real quick, because we do have like survivor fire mask, for example, which isn't as good as the survivor mask, it seems. The bash and cut protection isn't as good. The encumbrance is the same. Yeah, and we can make it this now. It's a reinforced gas mask that covers the face and eyes. It gives us really good protection, but um, yeah, obviously it would be covering our um, it'd be covering our mouth as well, so we wouldn't be able to use our fangs. And our fangs actually do a huge amount of damage for us uh, overall. A pair of attached earplugs. They hang around your neck, use them to plug them in. Is that a little bit easier for us to do? It takes 10 seconds for us to do, so I think we'll go ahead and do that. And let's go where are attached. And then I guess you just activate them. Yeah. Nice. Pair of attached earplugs just kind of hanging to the side. 
okay, I'm down with that. I do just like spending some time, sometimes, just to see what we have access to, what we can make, like Iron Greaves, for example, without any extra... I mean, the, the encumbrance isn't actually all that bad. Iron leg guards with simple leather lining. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's certainly tempting. We'd effectively just be hammering them out. It's definitely tempting <laughs> for us to have some better armor altogether. I do like uh, Dusk to still be quite dodgy, though. That's the kind of the tough thing there. So like I said before, we're going to have a look at some of the fire stuff. So we're just going to search for fire uh, and just see what we have. Survivor fire hood, survivor fire suit. So I think that those might be more we're looking at. No, that's still, that's kind of the overall does give good environmental protection and all the rest, but um, this is starting off as a poor fit. The fire boots are quite tempting to have. And uh, that's not that difficult. We just need to have some thread, some thread separate from our our sewing tool. Yeah, we can, we can make those easily enough. Uh, but I wouldn't mind having a look at all of the different types of boots that we can make. Decide what's actually going to be the best one for us to use. So it's easy enough for us to do that. If we go into armor and we have a look at feet, we can see all of the different types that we can make. So we have the survivor fire boots. We can stack them up against the heavy survivor boots. And we can see the difference here. So this, the fire boots do give us really good fire protection. But the heavy survivor boots just give us so much more uh, for the same encumbrance. Where I start to struggle with is the heavy stuff, it is decently heavy. It is it is effectively giving us kind of double. See, I'm I'm halfway in between wanting to make survivor boots and the heavy survivor boots. I honestly think for dusk that survivor boots are probably the better call for us. The light stuff is also tempting, purely just because um, I like the idea of us staying on the move, like being as nimble as possible. So I, I kind of feel like we might be going for light survivor gear overall. Looking at the armor now for our torso, let's just have a quick look and see what we might be able to do there. I mean, a cuirass would be would be pretty nice overall. Uh, but we want to have a look for the actual armor. And I, I, I think it might actually be kind of more of a suit. Because it'll be an overall piece for us. So there's the heavy survivor suit, which is obviously quite good, but encumbering all across the board. The survivor suit at 25. And then we have the light survivor suit, which is 6 and 10. And that's just on our normal layer. Yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult to decide what is going to be best for us in terms of encumbrance versus the amount of protection that we get. The survivor suit does seem to be not the best of both worlds. Even the, um, the boiled leather armor that we we're looking at there is going to be a little bit better. It doesn't have the environmental protection that, it, that the other does, but the bash and cut is a little bit better than the survivor. It's kind of... Yeah... I'm going to have to spend a good amount of time looking at this to decide exactly what we're going to want to do in terms of our armor going forwards. I think it would be better for us to have metal working up before we try and do something like that so that the focus in the next episode might be trying to get that uh, metal working side of things up and running. Because once we have that, we can start outfitting this uh, base with lighting and just kind of bringing it back to life. We haven't forgotten about the people that are still trapped down here. But we need to try and figure out another way to get into it. Some of you have suggested possibly using a vehicle to slowly try and grind down the outside wall. The dangerous thing when it, when it comes to destroying walls is that the roofing can collapse. Even the working on the cage on the inside, there's a chance that that can collapse. I'd be interested in going in there in our full firefighter gear first, potentially, to see if we can uh, withstand the heat. Whether or not that's going to happen, though, I'm not sure, because the flame-resistant 
uh, equipment protects us against fire damage, but I don't think it still protects us from the heat. The heat is something that we're just not going to be able to get away from, and that's what's actually doing damage to us in there. Yeah. It is a very, very tough scenario. I mean, we could see that even the time that we spent in there before, it took us, we would only we're only at 15%. We need to be out in there for a lot longer and I just, I don't, yeah, I don't see that happening yet at the very least. But we won't give up on them. We'll hold out hope. Perhaps there is a way. But we'll find that out in the future. Thank you for joining me for another episode with Dusk. This one was primarily focused on getting that equipment back home and just working on it so that we have some supplies to to work with that Nomex, that Kevlar, that leather, it's going to be invaluable to us later on as we start to create uh, better equipment overall. And we have some reinforcement to do to the equipment that we have on us at the moment. But uh, yeah, we're not going to reinforce anything, I think, until we settle on what we actually want to be wearing. And that, that's going to come in the next. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like or a comment to let me know if you enjoyed the show. I truly do hope you're all safe secure and happy out there. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay safe.